All right, now you've made it to the exit ticket station. Um, your exit ticket is going to be from pages 24 to 28. Um, so we read pages 24 to 26 in the last, um, in part one. And so in part two, um, we're going to pick up, um, but you can already answer question number one um, from what we read on pages 24 to 26. Okay, and then um, the conversation between Tim and his father takes place on page 27, which we're going to talk about. And then Tim's decision... Um, that's going to be on page 28. All right. Um, so I'm going to pick up on page um, 26. So if you want to press pause so that you can answer number one, go ahead and do that. Um, and I would refer um, back to your notes for that one. All right. So open up your book to page 26. I'm in the middle of page 26. It says, but now it seems like it wasn't going to just to be just arguments anymore. Around 50 of the Minutemen and lots of British troops had been killed on Friday at Lexington and Concord, or wherever it was. Although nobody seemed to know how many for sure, and Sam was going to fight. Okay, so this kind of gets at a little bit about number three. It's like introducing that decision he's trying to make. Sunday morning was bright and sunny and warm. The rain had stopped during the night. Although the road was full of mud, the fields were drying and the birds were singing. I couldn't enjoy it very much, though. The fight Sam had had with father the night before still hung around me the way a bad dream does sometimes. Sam and father had had fights before, and they always got over them in a day or two. But this one seemed worse than the others, and it worried me that maybe they wouldn't fix it. I didn't think father would want to talk about it. Usually when something important happened, he would just ignore it until he decided what to do. So I was surprised when he brought it up when we were getting ready for church. Tim, did Sam say anything to you about going to war? I didn't, um, I didn't want to lie to father, but I didn't want to give Sam away either. Well, he said he was, but I thought he was probably just boasting. He wasn't boasting, Tim. He's going over to Weathersfield. The fools are planning to march up to Massachusetts to meddle in something that isn't their affairs. Is he really going to fight, Father? I hope not, he said. Then he frowned. What do you think about all of this, Tim? Pay attention. I don't know, Father, I said. I can't figure out exactly what it's about. I suppose Sam's been preaching rebellion to you. I tried to think of something that wouldn't get Sam in any more trouble. He said we ought to be free. That's just college boy wind, Father said. He sounded pretty scornful. Who isn't free? Aren't we free? The whole argument, I'm on the top of page 28, the whole argument is over a few taxes that hardly amount to anything for most people. What's the use of principles if you have to be dead to keep them? We are Englishmen, Timmy. Of course there are injustices. There are always injustices. That's the way of God's world. But you never get rid of injustices by fighting. Look at Europe. They've been one war after another for hundreds of years. And show me where anything ever got any better for them. Well, let's go to church. It's time for prayer. I decided to forget about the whole thing. It was too worrying. We went across the muddy road to church and I climbed up into the balcony where the children, Indians, and black people sat. 
Running Ridge, being a small place, I knew everybody there, all the kids, and Tom Warups and Ned and Star's black man. I sat down next to Jerry Sanford. Jerry was a couple of years younger than me, but he was the person closest to my age around, and we did a lot of things together. First thing he said was, we heard about Sam ran away to fight. Nobody was going to let me forget about it. That was for sure. All right, we'll stop right there. Um, silently complete your exit ticket. If you need to go back and re-listen, um, go ahead and do that. And don't forget to do part six of your paragraph.